OK, we've got the toucan moving up when I press the mouse button and he falls down when I let go of it. So that's fine, we can create the impression that he's flying. But to really create that impression, I need these trees moving. I need the background scrolling so it looks as though the toucan is moving forwards. So now I'm going to write some code to make these trees move. So let's select this sprite, make sure I've got the code displayed, and we'll begin everything when the green flag is clicked. So events, when green flag clicked, and what I want to happen is these trees to move from this side of the screen to this side of the screen. I'm going to put them in their starting position first of all. And I'm going to use a motion block to set the X and Y position. You can see because I've got them in the right place to begin with, Scratch has very kindly put the correct numbers in there for me. Now I don't want them to come on the screen immediately. I want to wait a little bit, one or two seconds. So I'm going to use a wait block this time, underneath control. But I don't want to wait the same amount of time every time. I want a little bit of randomization in here. So I'm going to wait for a random number of seconds. And I can do that using an operator. Pick random. And what this will do is it'll pick a random number between 1 and anything I specify in here. So let's say pick random 1 to 5. So nothing happens for a length of time between 1 and 5 seconds. It'll be different every time. Then we'll display the clump of trees. Needless to say, I'm going to do something to hide them a little bit later on. So let's go to Looks and Show. So I press the green flag, the trees jump over to the right-hand side of the screen, and then we wait for a little bit. The next thing I want to happen is that these trees glide over to the left. So I'm going to use another motion block, but before I do, let's just get these trees in the right position. So that's over on the left-hand side this time, and the reason I'm doing this is because I don't have to worry about what numbers I'm using. Now I'm going to use the glide block. So the trees will move across and I'll see them moving. I'm just going to make sure that the Y value here is the same as the Y value at the top, minus 105. Because I don't want the trees to move up or down, I just want them to move sideways. So I'm only going to change the X value. And I can also say how long I want them to take to glide across the screen. So let's say three seconds. Let's give this a go. We're waiting a random amount of time. And then the trees glide across. And I want to hide them at the end. So let's get looks. Hide. Let's try that again. A random amount of time trees move across and then they disappear. Now I want that to repeat over and over again. So I'm going to use a forever block to make this happen over and over again. Go to control, there's my forever block and I'm going to take these commands and pop them inside it. I also want to make sure that once it's moved across to the left, that it moves back to the right again. So actually, I need to take a copy of this. I can just duplicate it and pop that in there. So it moves across for the first time, but then forever it jumps back to its starting position and then it glides again, then it hides. Oh, and I want to wait a little bit again, so I need something else inside that block. Let's duplicate the wait. OK, we'll pop that in there. Oh, get my show in there. I'm thinking about it. I need another show in here. And that should do the trick. 
my trees moved across the screen we wait a little bit here they come again and here they come again and it's a random amount of time before they come back let's just stop that running I can change this value if I want to maybe let's go for seven seconds so they don't appear too often and here they come now let's get the top doing exactly the same so I'm going to select the other sprite that's these trees here make sure I've got the code category displayed and I'll go to events when the green flag is clicked I want them to move into position first of all which is going to be over this side we'll use a motion block to set that the numbers are in there for me very nice I'm going to wait for a random amount of time so I'm using the pick random operator here and we'll wait between one and let's say four seconds it doesn't have to be the same as the trees underneath then I'll display them so I'll use show and I need a forever block because what's going to go on now will repeat itself over and over I need the trees to move over to this side let's get them in position round about there then we can use the glide block to move it to that position let's make this the same as the Y position we have to start with so the trees don't move down they just move sideways and of course within this block we need to get them at the right starting position so I'm going to duplicate this bit here and pop that inside the forever loop as well when they've glided to the left we hide them we wait a little while a random amount of time let's go for six seconds this time and then we display them again so that's pretty much the same script except the X and Y values are a little bit different let's try it out my toucan's flying Whoa. Well, now that top clump of trees is moving very, very quickly. And I'm surprised I've actually managed to move them. So let's just stop that and slow them down a little bit. I can change that here in the glide block. Let's glide across over, say, five seconds. And let's try that again. So my toucan's moving up and down when I use the mouse. Here comes the top obstacle. Here comes the bottom obstacle. Oh, that was tight. We wait a random amount of time before any of those obstacles comes back. They never quite come in the same place because they're traveling at different speeds and they're starting at different times. And that's looking pretty good. We seem to have a, a kind of a working game going on. Every now and then it's going to be impossible to get through that gap. Let's do the balloon. Something similar for the balloon. Okay, so we'll select the balloon sprite. We've got the code category displayed. We'll start with the green flag for now, so let's go to events when the green flag is clicked. We're going to jump the balloon to its starting position. Let's make it a roundabout here, I guess. So we want a motion block. And it will go to that position to begin with. And now I want a forever block. Because what happens now is going to happen continuously. I'm going to change the X value by minus three, let's say, so the balloon is floating along. And I want the balloon to come back 
when it touches the edge. So I'm going to use an if block to test if the balloon is touching the edge. If, let's go to sensing, if touching the edge, that's the edge of the screen, we're going to jump the balloon to a new position. So we'll have motion, go to X, and we'll make that 205, which was the starting position. And I want the height of the balloon, the distance from the top or the bottom, to be random. So rather than just popping a number in there, we'll use pick random again. Let's go operators, pick random, and we'll choose a random number, let's say between 80 and minus 80. And I think that'll keep it on the screen. Now I'll just double check that. If the balloon is up here, that's a Y value of 82. And if it's down here, that's about 115. And there's minus 80. So I'm saying the balloon will appear somewhere between the top here and the bottom there. Around about there, between 80 and minus 80. And then it'll scroll across the screen. Let's do a hide. We'll wait a little while. A random amount of time, let's say between one and three seconds. And then we'll display it. OK, so let's just think about that then. When we click on the green flag, the balloon jumps into position. That's just for the first time around. And then, forever, the balloon is changing x by minus 3. So the balloon is moving towards the toucan. If it touches the edge, then it jumps back to its original position, but the height can vary. The height will be random. It'll hide. We wait a little while, and then it displays again. So that balloon is going to appear and disappear in a kind of a random way. Let's see what happens. You can see the balloon moving across there. Doesn't matter if I touch anything yet. Oh, look, here's the balloon again. And the balloon's come in at a different height. Remember, the balloon is an obstacle as well. Well, it's looking a bit dangerous. And I'm going to write some code so that if we touch any of those other sprites, then the game is over. But so far, we kind of have a flying toucan. I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to make that bird flap. Let's go back to the Toucan's code and we'll pop a change costume block in there. Here we go, switch to costume and we'll do this when we press the mouse button. Switch to costume, Toucan P. Now I'm not sure which costume is which costume, but we'll try them out and see what happens. Uh, I'm going to wait a little amount of time here just a fraction of a second, maybe 0.2 of a second. Again, I can, oh, 0 0.3 will do. Uh, I can play around with those numbers as well. And then we'll switch costume again. Back to Toucan A. So let's see how that works. Yeah, it's kind of flapping when I press the mouse button. I think I just want to change this number ever so slightly. Let's try 0.1. And again. Yeah, that's flapping. I'm not sure I've got the right costumes in here. Let's switch from Toucan B to Toucan C. Let's see how that looks. That's not too bad. And I've only got him flapping when I hold the left mouse button down. Otherwise, he's just gliding. That looks pretty good, actually. OK, so next time we'll write some code that will crash everything when that toucan touches an obstacle. But at the moment, we've got him flying and we've got the background scrolling.